Oh my. Oliver, I have written you some more notes that might be nice to refer to in the coming days. These are likely the last batch, as between the two of us, we should be enough on the same page to proceed with things accordingly. I appreciate you going so far outside of your comfort zone with all of this. I know it isn't easy to work with others, even though you consider, even those you consider close friends. In the face of that difficulty, consider the remaining pages in this journal as a gift. After all, you are the only other person I know that goes through paper. Okay, I'm just going to say a lot. You go through paper a lot. Try not to be shy about sharing your craft. Okay. Oh, wow. The underworld. Setting foot in the underworld is an unsettling experience. Most of the ground is rigid and spongy like the flesh of a corpse, and there is no wind at all as though the air itself has been killed and left for dead. To be a living thing surrounded by death is not only how some of us imagined spending our summer to be certain. I don't think any of us ever truly got accustomed to it, but perhaps that's a good thing as it dangers as its dangers keep complacency at bay. As for how we process the underworld itself, I pray that the dark portal within Violet's locker is the only one in existence, as it is harrowing to think that there could be others. The underworld is certainly a nightmare come to life, or what life it could come to. There are no other humans. Only sirens and wisps reside there. The former are murderous and disturbing to behold, while the latter do not even acknowledge our existence. It does seem that this world is linked to ours by more than one, by more than just the portal, however. Liquids we carry into the underworld via the vials of Samanth are transmuted into other things and defeating the sirens has applicable effects. Oh my goodness gracious. Despite all of this, it's hard to say whether the underworld truly parallel mm. but my pocket watch and Ashton's phone tick very slowly so it's reasonable to conclude that time passes at a deprecated pace here. Still, there's definitely a link. So I wonder if Oliver, quote unquote, going to college means he's just going to go to the underworld like by himself. The sirens. And I'm also going to assume that unless signed by someone else, these are Oliver's notes. The sirens are horrifying creatures to behold. They take many forms as they are effectively their own species with several different breeds. Although they lack some common traits, they lack human legs, their eyes are glassy, and they always reside on or close to a slate. That kind of makes sense for sirens because sirens lured pirates off their ship or something like that and they were always on like a slab of rock in the ocean sirens often have means of physical attack such as claws barbs and tentacles that sprout from various orifices however the most dangerous aspect of a siren is its song since the vocal cords of a siren are capable of producing otherworldly arias and cries okay so they are keeping some siren like common traits of a siren so that's okay these songs can evoke a wide range of human emotion including fear anger joy and sorrow against unprotected ears these emotions are amplified to their extremes fear becomes paralysis anger provokes uncontrollable rage joy leads to unhealthy infatuation and so on okay 
I see what they did there with joy. Okay. Mysteriously, sirens can also sink to their environment to beckon their dead surroundings to life. Some sirens sing to their rigid ground to trigger an earthquake, to the dead air to summon bone-chilling gusts, and to the crimson sky to beckon a storm of meteors. That is why we wear modified noid-canceling headsets when facing them. They do not block the siren song entirely, but it makes it much harder to fall victim to them. When we destroy sirens, particularly the strong ones, it has observable, observable effects on our world. For instance, we had slain one group of particularly fat sirens one day. The next day, we saw several more people in our world going out for vigorous walks or bike rides. The parking lot of the gym was full and the crab bucket had more customers than a grub burger for once. They seem quite territorial and they have no regard for the lives of wisps or of humans. I consider it fortunate that the that they generally do not hunt us down so that we can at least engage the nightmares at our own pace. Slates. The slates are slabs of stone that protrude from the stickly ground of the underworld. Upon most slates, one or more siren resides. Generally, sirens await the approach of a human or wisp before becoming aggressive. Although the stares of their glassy eyes up to that point are impossible to ignore. While they are aggressive, most of them will not stray more than that about 20 meters from the slate. It is safe to say that they are territorial of these stones. Are they simply protecting the slates or do they simply not wish to stray too far from a zone of comfort? It's impossible to say because... There doesn't seem to be anything special about the slates themselves, at least not from what I can tell. The states are also nearly indestructible. All attempts from Ashton, Andy, and their muses to destroy the slates have failed and results in so much as a scratch. Okay, so there we go. We're finally mentioned Annie. It's quite interesting to me because they haven't mentioned her really at all besides her own voicemail. And another little thing here, their muses. So we've heard at least Oliver with the bass guitar. A type of muse is like an inspiration creatively. Um, or it, I guess it could be any kind of inspiration. But I, I really can't see Oliver, like, hooking up to an amp and, like, playing the bass, trying to, like, break this slate. Like, I just, I don't see it. So I'm not too sure what they're referencing here. But it's good to see that Andy is also known for going into the underworld. Wisps. Wisps are interesting creatures. They generally reassemble, oh, sorry, resemble humans, at least in appearance, but all color has been drained to leave only black. A thick black liquid drips from their body as though they are constantly bleeding, yet their body language does not indicate any pain. It would be impossible to tell from their face if they feel agony or not, as they lack faces. Oh, so it's like... Like Slenderman, almost. Instead of eyes, noses, or mouths, a gaping void occupies the space between their thin hair and formless jaws. They generally ignore us as we move through the underworld, even if we bump into them, shove them, or even stab them, as Violet once did by accident. They continue to go about their aimless business. However, they are completely vulnerable to the song of the sirens, which causes them to do unpredictable things that often lead them to hurting themselves. In the worst cases, they die. However, if they die, death does not appear to be permanent for them, as they will reappear at the same spot at which they died mere minutes after they perish. 
Okay, so these wisps do not sound like the wisps from Witcher, where they're like more ghost ghostly. The seed. The seed is an overwhelming source of negative energy, but that it is guarded by the most powerful siren of all. It is natural to think it may very well be a source of power for the sirens. Since the sirens appear to both symbolize and encourage the worst of both the wisps of the underworld and the humans of our world, then destroying the seed should eliminate that negative and perhaps the sirens with it. By proxy, this should eliminate the negativity of the town of Siren's Call as well. Laziness, anxiety, discomfort, and fury could be the things of the past, at least for this town. I suppose this would make us heroes, in a sense, but I don't expect we would receive any sort of fanfare for it, being that the underworld and its trappings are not, nor should they ever be, common knowledge. I can't speak for the others, but this is fine for me. This sort of work tends to be its own reward. Okay. Okay. So, well, um, let's go to the index. Oh, okay. So Oliver's Muse, Bristfall. Our leader was the first among us to enter the underworld. Thus, I suppose it only fitting that his muse would take the appearance of an angel. Bristfall looks majestic and invincible, but looks can be deceiving. He is made entirely of wax. Mind you, wax is sturdier than you'd think, but it stands little chance, chance against intense flames. Furthermore, his ability to fly is quite limited. I would liken it more to hovering, really. Still, I suppose the upside to Bristfall's wax composure is that he can meld himself into a number of different forms to overcome almost any foe. Muse, working definition. A manifestation of an individual's least desired mode of existence, as well as a source of the kind of power that individual desires most in life. Okay, there's there's a lot to unpack there. Um, so he looks like an angel. So Oliver must feel that he isn't very angelic in his real life. Um, he's held by wax. I mean, he is, yeah, he's made of wax. So maybe he desires more stability. Like, I just, I don't know how to translate wax in the underworld into a source of the kind of power to desire most in real life. I maybe the fact that he can just manipulate himself into anything he wants maybe he's kind of just put in this cookie cutter college boy box and he doesn't want to be I don't know that's like there's a lot going on with that Violet's muse in China in China amongst all of our muses Violet may be in possession of the most docile and adorable of them all a lamb this is not to say that violet's muse is incapable in fact it is quite the opposite violet's muse possesses several unique abilities that only she can use things that rest things that the rest of our muses simply cannot do such as manipulation of time and space at least as far as the underworld is concerned i cannot speak much for violet's muse sturdiness since it's rare that she even gets hit much in the first place, the fleece shines blindingly bright in response to the attackers drawing near. I do not think she is capable of taking too many hits, however, especially from Siren's direct combat may be unwise. Source of power. Okay, so back to the Muse definition. She has a docile and adorable lamb. Who does that remind you of in their real life? Judith. So I guess Violet 
is jealous of Judith, which I, I really don't understand because Violet and Oliver are kind of the the couple of the group. So her kind of, kind of wanting to be Judith is like, well, do you do you think you're coming across too stern or or do you want to be beloved by everyone with such a docile and adorable uh, look or personality like that? I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what um, Judith's muse is. Okay, so Ashton's muse, Cal- Calderia, Calderera. Ashton isn't one to mince words, which is good, because Ashton's muse has no words to offer. At a distance, it looks like he's just a golem made of rock. However, if one looks closer, you can see veins of magma running through his entire body just beneath the top layer of what seems to be a consistently radiating granite armor. Curiously, the granite armor will always regrow back in the same exact pattern. If Ashton's muse sustains heavy damage, his volcanic underskin is exposed, and he becomes extremely dangerous both to fight against and to fight alongside, as jets of magma spray out from his body with every punch and kick. Ashton fights alongside him rather recklessly, but perhaps this is for the better. Neither of them will grow complacent anytime soon. So, uh, this is like so confusing. So, when I first read Oliver's and Violet's, it kind of sounded like they turn into these things. But now it sounds like they are there as themselves And then they have their own League of Legends character, like, near them. So, I'm I'm kind of getting it. I'm kind of putting the underworld, the siren, the people, I'm kind of putting it all together. What I don't understand is, what, what was Oliver and Violet doing that, I don't know, they went into her locker and was like, oh, hey, here's the underworld. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like... I'm taking it back to that, and I just, I don't know. It's really, it's really weird. Okay, Andy's muse, five-tenth. Andy's muse is exotic-looking, to say the least. Where does the sloth end and the machine begin? The sharp organic claws are just as deadly as the blast of its laser cannons. Its speed is certainly uncharacteristic of a regular sloth. It's the fastest thing I've ever seen. If I could even see it in motion, oftentimes the sirens will be dead before a chance of proper combat has begun. Perhaps that is the better, though. Five-tenth may be strong, fast, durable, but he lacks in special skills and techniques. Regardless, it shares Andy's enthusiasm, which is wonderful, but also a bit jarring considering that it's coming from a sloth of all things. My my biology is a bit rusty here, but one has to wonder, could the real sloth truly be this capable if machinery were capable of altering its temperament? Or does the temperament itself play into capability? Okay, Andy's muse really doesn't make any sense. Okay, so I understand that in real life, Andy is the opposite of a muse. Like, I mean, um, a sloth, which I totally get because sloth is, like, lazy. That's, like, the seven deadly sins. It's sloth. Um, but it's fast. I feel like, I mean, Andy works out. I, I would assume she's faster than the rest of the team. Um, the machine part, I don't know, is it because she's, like, super organic in real life? Like, she's, like, eating salads and shit? Like, I don't know. That, that one confuses me a little bit. Emile's muse. Crescendo. Oh, okay, so we can see that Emil is writing these notes because he says, my own muse. My own muse is fine enough, I suppose. I cannot deny the resolve 
with which he fights. Although his skills more indirect in nature, Crescendo's sword does not hit as hard as Violet's Muse's fists. Or, or no, I think that's Ash's Muse. I'm sorry, I can't say some of these Muse's names. Or fi five tenths w lasers, but the blade can be enchanted with several different prayers. Strikes from the enchanted storm sword seem to have any number of harmful effects to the sirens for instance their movement may be slow to painful to a painful crawl but they may go insane and attack one another or their precious voices may be sliced and taken from them rendering them unable to afflict us with their songs at the risk of sounding self inflating i am certain i certainly think that the way he fights suits me as clever and thoughtful application of these ailments will go rather hand in hand with my ability to gather intel and scope out the siren's weakness oh my god um i don't like emil so i'm assuming here that emil is the type of guy to kind of like take a step back and analyze everything and then strategize a plan like i can see that so his muse kind of just goes out there and like slices and dices you know what i mean so that's the guy of action emil is not so that i can see that one. Oh god here comes judith judith's muse Bog bogasta Bo <laughs> i'm gonna call it boo <laughs> if we had never seen the sirens beforehand we might have all been horrified when judith's muse came into being she always has a wild look in her eyes and i don't care to look any closer to see if my impression might be wrong too risky and yet i don't mind the smell in fact Bo's spine spines oh more than one spine smell strongly of caramel so it's quite pleasant I recall Ashton and Andy daring each other to lick one of Bo's detached spines. And then Ashton went as far as to eat one when Ashton's wounds closed up and he became strong enough to be a siren to death without his trusty baseball bat. We knew we had stumbled upon something amazing. Bo can also curl into a ball around us to shield us from harm as one might expect of a hedgehog or a porcupine or wherever she is that is so foul the fact that they have these like muses i guess they can touch them like i guess they can interact in this underworld but he ate one he ate one of the spines oh that is so disgusting uh Ugh, I can't even imagine what that looks like. I don't want to. Like, that is so disgusting. Blech. Okay. So the rest of the pages I have not obtained yet. But yeah, I hope you liked this little, like, journal entry video. It wasn't quite as interesting because I was basically just reading the whole time. Um, so I'm going to count this as like a side episode, not really a main episode, because it's completely optional if you watch this video. Um, I'm definitely going to be referring back to these pages. So if you kind of feel like you're out of the loop, well, this is the, this is the episode. You know what I mean? Um, definitely leave a comment down below. What the hell do you imagine when I'm reading this? Like, I know I'm not the best um at articulating words off a page it's like half me being a fast reader and i'm like trying to read the whole page half me trying to like articulate as best i can um but yeah just let me know down in the comments your little theories uh, and don't forget to subscribe 